Our scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 39. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, we started a new sermon series on hospitality, and not the um, polite, friendly kind of hospitality where it's all about tea and cookies and waving nicely to people, but the radical, life-changing kind of hospitality that the Bible talks about and Jesus models for us. The kind of hospitality that has the, the ability to change the world. Hospitality, at the very simplest sense, is making room in our lives for another, providing a wide welcome to whoever we encounter, sharing God's love and grace with whoever we meet each day. Last week, we talked about what it looked like to show hospitality towards God, to make room in your own life to hear God speak, to experience his presence. And I hope you had a chance to connect with God, however you do that, this past week, to hear him speak and to hear him tell you that you are loved. The next few weeks, we're going to be talking about hospitality to neighbor, stranger, and friend. But today, I wanted to start a little closer to home. Today, I wanted to talk about what it looks like to show hospitality to ourselves. Because before we're able to love and care for those around us, we must first learn what it means to love and care for ourselves. It reminds me of the announcement we always hear when you get on an airplane. You file in, you squeeze into these itty-bitty little seats, and the flight attendant come out and start going through their spiel on safety. And they say, in case of an emergency, the little oxygen mask is going to come down. And you need to put that oxygen mask on you first before you help anybody else around you. Seems counterintuitive. It seems like you'd want to help those who struggle the most, the elderly, the children, those who might be sickly. But we're told that it's more important to care for ourselves, to make sure we're healthy, to make sure we're ready and safe before we can then go and help other people. And it's the same tr is true with hospitality. In order to fully love and welcome those we encounter each day, we must first love and welcome ourselves. Jesus models this kind of healthy self-care for us in our text this morning. We find Jesus at the very beginning of his ministry. He's just called the disciples, and he's become traveling throughout the countryside, teaching and preaching and healing people and performing miracles. And he's starting to draw attention, both good and and bad kind of attention. Large crowds are beginning to gather to hear him preach, maybe hoping to see a miracle, maybe hoping to experience a miracle themselves. They gather excited to hear what everybody's been talking about, this man who talks so passionately about God and his kingdom. But he also starts to draw criticism from the Pharisees, from the religious leaders. He starts to upset the status quo. And he gets a taste of that resistance that he's going to meet, the resistance that ultimately leads to his death. So here in the middle of all this chaos and ministry, Jesus sneaks away in the middle of the night for just a few minutes of undisturbed peace. It's likely by this time in his ministry that he's feeling exhausted by the work, maybe overwhelmed by the challenges and emotions that he's facing. Maybe he's feeling the humanity of his body, the aches and pains, the weariness of his soul. He's in need of some time of rest and recovery. So he sneaks away without telling anybody, and he goes off to the solitary place, and he spends time in prayer, in God's presence, taking care of himself. The disciples are frantic when they wake up and find Jesus missing, and they look all over the place finding him, so worried about what might have happened, anxious to get back to the crowds and to the important work that they were doing together. But Jesus takes it all in stride. Having finally received that rest he needed, he was then ready to go back out and continue ministering. Having taken that time for himself, 
he's now able to go back and love those around him. It's an important lesson for us to learn because it's not always easy to take time out of our busy lives in order to care for ourselves. Except Jesus shows us that it's important for us to care for ourselves before we care for others. He models for us what it looks like to extend hospitality to our own lives, to welcome ourselves just as we are, not as we hope we were, but just as we are, maybe tired, exhausted, weak. Jesus shows us what it looks like to extend grace to himself, giving himself what he needs, time away, time with God, time to refresh and recharge. Here Jesus is showing us what it looks like to put on your own oxygen mask before you go and help the people around you. He doesn't judge himself for needing a break. He doesn't tell himself he should just push through and keep going. But he lovingly welcomes all those feelings and emotions that he's feeling and meets that with love. He models for us what it looks like to be hospitable to us. Caring for ourselves isn't always easy. There's lots of things that get in the way of offering ourselves a wide welcome. I think it's especially difficult for people who love to care and to take care of other people. So many of us gathered in this room have given our lives to serving our family, our friends, our coworkers. We've chosen professions that make a difference in this world. And it can be hard to step back and to take care of ourselves because it feels like there's so many other people out there that need us first. It feels selfish, selfish to take time to care for our own lives. I think of the teacher who loves her students, a parents who just want what's best for their kids, a friend whose heart breaks when another friend is struggling. It seems like there's always one more thing that we need to get done, always one more person that we need to help. And so we ignore our own needs. We ignore our own limitations and struggles. We find it hard to put down the important work that we're doing and to look after ourselves. It feels selfish and indulgent. And yet it's not. And even Jesus shows us what it looks like to stop the most important work that there is and to extend grace and love to oneself. When we think of hospitality, we know it's important to love those around us. We know that in each person we meet, we meet Christ, that each and every person is a part of God's creation, that they were formed in God's likeness, that they bear the very image of God. And because of that, each and every person is deserving of love and honor and respect. But friends, you too were made in the image of God. You too deserve that love and honor and respect. We do God a disservice when we don't take care of ourselves, when we don't extend the same love and hospitality to ourselves as we do to others. God calls us to love us just as much as we love others to accept who we are, the limitations and the struggles that come with that. Jesus took the time to eat and to sleep and to rest and to play. He models for us what it looks like to love ourselves generously and fully, to care for us the way God wants us to be cared for. There's nothing selfish about taking time for ourselves every once in a while. In fact, it's a mark of a mature and growing Christian. I think sometimes, too, we struggle to show hospitality to ourselves because we haven't come to grips with our own weaknesses or our own limitations. It's hard to get help for an illness when you don't admit that you're ill. I think a lot of times we don't like to admit that we have limitations, admit that we have struggles. We don't want to admit that we need help and therefore we can't receive that help. I alternate between frustration and denial when I think of my own physical limitations. I don't like that my back keeps me from doing things that I love to do, like hiking or 
walking or gardening. I don't like that headaches can come up and get in the way of my day and completely rearrange my schedule. So sometimes I pretend like they don't exist and I just keep going and I do more housework than I should even though my back is aching and I pay for it later. Or I pretend like my head doesn't really hurt and I go out and run errands and go about my day and I end up in bed all day because I can't take it anymore. I find that when I deny my own limitations, when I deny my own needs and weaknesses, I'm not able to care for myself the way that I'm supposed to care for myself. It's easier to pretend like I'm invincible and that I don't need help. And so I deny myself that grace and mercy that Jesus invites us to live into. Because the thing is, none of us are perfect. We're not supposed to be. We're not God. And part of hospitality is accepting ourselves just the way that we are, flaws and weaknesses and all, and making a wide welcome for ourselves, however we find us this day. I wonder what about yourself you have difficulty accepting. Maybe it's a physical limitation. Maybe it's a deep pain that you've carried too long. Maybe it's a secret shame that eats you from the inside out. What would it look like to extend grace in these areas of your life? What would it look like to recognize that none of us are perfect, but that we are loved anyway? I don't think there's any greater feeling in this world than to have somebody know you, know everything about you, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and choose to love you anyways, to accept you in spite of your flaws, in spite of your limitations, in spite of your sin, to have somebody make allowances for your brokenness and love you in spite of these things. That's how God feels about us. He knows that we're not perfect, and yet he loves us still. God, in his great mercy, saw our sin, and instead of condemning us or judging us, he chose to die so that we could become his precious children. It's the greatest gift of love that there ever was, and God wants us to honor that gift of love by taking good care of ourselves When we think about hospitality, it's easy to think about the need to love those around us, to lead to sacrifice and to be graceful and to be generous with those we encounter. And it's easy to forget that that grace should extend to us as well. Jesus tells we sh us that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But if we don't love ourselves well, how do we ever expect to love our neighbors well? You can't show somebody grace if you haven't experienced grace in your own life. You can't forgive somebody's sins or shortcomings if you haven't had your own sins and shortcomings forgiven. God invites us to show hospitality towards ourselves first and foremost because we are his beloved children. He has chosen to love us. And he also invites us to show that hospitality towards ourselves because when we learn to love ourselves, we're able to love others better. It's not easy to do, to show hospitality to yourself. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we aren't worth it. We don't have the time to take care of ourselves. Sometimes we're ashamed of our weaknesses and our needs. Sometimes it's hard to accept that somebody loves us so much that they forgive us. But know this, you are God's beloved child, precious in his sight, and he wants you to know and experience that love every day of your life. So this week I invite you to practice hospitality towards yourself. Practice what it means to love and to care for yourself and accept yourself just how you are. In your bulletin this week, you'll see a section on hospitality called Trying It at Home. And it's ways to practice hospitality. I'd encourage you to pick one or two of these things and try it out this week. I promise you'll like it. It's things like sleeping in or not doing something you hate. Ways to accept yourself and your needs and to care for yourself before you go out and care for others. 
Jesus showed it what, us what it looks like to care for ourselves, to love ourselves well. And we too are invited to experience God's love, to extend that grace and forgiveness to ourselves, and simply know that we are his, the great beloved. Let us pray. God, I thank you that you have chosen us to be your children. God, that you have shown us such great love, such great forgiveness, that you accept us just as we are. God, help us to accept ourselves just as we are, to show the same kind of love and care towards ourselves as you would have us show. Teach us what it looks like, not just to love others, but to love ourselves in all that we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.